guys, this is Heather from the Glittery Bohemian. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out for my awesome apron that I'm wearing <laughs> in this video. Um, it says, you shine, I sparkle, Glitaholic. I got it from my friends at Glitiful. They have amazing glitter. Um, if you ever get a chance, go see them at uh, Glitiful.com. It's, it's really great stuff. I, I love it. I'm addicted. But today, uh, I am here. I, I'm this weird camera. I don't know what's going on when I look at it. It looks different directions. But um, I'm here to give you a tutorial on the Nutcracker Cup. Uh, the one that I'm going to show you is a 20-ounce skinny. Thing is, you see them in lots of places. But then you go look up the tutorial. And... There's, there isn't one. Here's my friend here too. Sorry. She's kind of creepy sometimes. I, I sew clothing as well. So she's kind of my mannequin. <laughs> this was one of my pattern tests that I made. Um, but I digress. Anyway, um, when you go to look up how to do these cups for the measurements and stuff, there's nothing there. So I decided to make this one for a 20 ounce. I have not made a 30 ounce yet. When I do, I can either make another tutorial or add the measurements to this one. But um, So I just decided to do that here for you guys today. It's a lot of steps, so we'll get started and I'll show you what to do for the first part. And then we'll move on to the next thing. So let me move you down a little bit. Okay, this is a 20 ounce hog skinny. And you're going to take this and sand it and wash it like you ordinarily do. So this one has been sanded and washed. Um, the first thing I do is I just get some painter's tape. Because like I said, there are measurements for this. We're gonna start with the top part, which is a blue glitter, which is where you put the crown part of the nutcracker. Now you can make different colors. You can do different designs on these instead of a crown, you can put something else. Um, but the, this for this tutorial, this is where the crown goes. So the measurements for the crown area, which is a blue strip and a black strip, they're half an inch a piece. Okay, so I'm gonna take this for the blue strip and I'm gonna take, I just use the like smallest tape I can find in the store, painter's tape, it's not really that important. I just rip off a piece. I'm not really that technical about this either. Um, I just take a measuring tape and I kind of curve it in and hold it with my hands and I just let it fall. I mean, it's not really that important. Um, and then I'm going to go to where the half inch is. And I'm going to take my tape piece that I cut it off, and I'm going to mark it. Now I can move it. And people ask me, how do I keep my lines so straight? I just kind of eyeball it. So I just go around with my tape, you know. And sometimes I'll take my tape measure again and just kind of go, as I go around, make sure it stays that half an inch. I'll have to ignore my son in the background. He's yelling at Fortnite. <laughs> the tip part's looking good. And you see the tape meets back up if you do it straight anyway. And then I just take my extra, pull it off, and then I've got my line for my blue. Okay, so I just push it down here. And I've got my line. Now, what's down here doesn't matter. I just need a half an inch between here and here of silver showing, okay? So now, what I do is I am going to take, this is very low tech, because I'm not gonna spray paint this whole thing in different colors. I do use the base coat for each color of glitter. So I'm not gonna go block all this off of painter's tape and spray paint it, because it's, uh, to me, it's a lot more difficult than this. So, I'm just take a paintbrush, just a regular flat brush, wide flat brush. And I like using folk art paint a lot better than apple, apple barrel. Um, 
I think it's got more vibrant colors. I especially like using this in my out in my uh, epoxy for cups. It's, they're really bright colors. So this is the Folk Art True Blue. I think it actually comes in the box set. At Walmart, they have a box set of like, I think it's called just like the basic colors or the original colors or something like that. Uh, the primary colors, some one of those names like that. And it comes with like red, yellow, blue, black, white, green. So that would be a good set to have. So this one is true blue. And I just take a little bit. Currently, I'm working on an army of these. So I have a lot of them going on. But I can show you what one looks like when we get to that point having the glitter done. I'm going to squeeze a little bit. This is my kid's paint butterfly mess, but it's like so caked with paint, but it doesn't even matter. We just reuse it many times. <laughs> so I'm going to take my cup and just a paintbrush and I'm going to Very simple. Paint on the tape. You're going to want to paint on the tape so that you get a nice line. That's why you have the tape there. Okay, now I've got one coat here. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to come back and give it a second one. Okay, so I'm back and I have taped off my tops half an inch and I have painted two coats of the blue. The true blue folk art around the top. The first time I did this, I used Mod Podge and you can certainly use Mod Podge um, here to apply your glitter. Um, this, this time around, I'm trying epoxy and I actually like, I like using epoxy method mostly for things because I get a better coverage. I also like it because I found with the Mod Podge when I peel the tape, it peels off some of the glitter, so I would have to go back in and like make more adjustments to it. Um, with the epoxy, I don't have, I'm noticing I'm not having to do that at least as much. I mean, I'm making quite a few right now, but um, I mix up a, like a very small amount. I mean, this is probably like use five to do epoxy method on a regular cup. This is probably like between one and two. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm making a big batch right now, so I can use some of this on other cups, but if you don't want to waste the epoxy, you can certainly use Mod Podge. It's just when you rip this tape, some of it's going to come up and you're going to have to go back and like patch it in. So that's why I like using the epoxy. I just mix a little amount. So I'm going to take some of this epoxy here and just like I would like on epoxy method, just rubbing it on there. I'm a big uh, epoxy method girl. I try to use that as much as I can. I just feel like it, the glitter sticks better to it. You better coverage the first time. You don't have to go back and redo it. So I try to use it as much as I can. I mean, you just mix a small amount. It's fine. Like I said, I'm doing a, I've got about seven over here that I'm working on so I can use this on other cups. If you don't want to waste the epoxy, I understand. So Mod Podge can be used here a bit. So I've put it on here. I'm going to put this off to the side. Use it on my other ones. And I am going to take my finger off here. And I'm using, this is September from Glitiful. It's a holographic blue, kind of a, between a fine and a chunky. I'm going to use that up top here. I'm just going to sprinkle it on. See, like I said, it, if you do this with Mod Podge, I feel like when I did with the Mod Podge, I would have to do probably at least three coats of the Mod Podge to get what I wanted. To me, it's worth wasting like an ml of epoxy or whatever to do this one time <laughs> and not have to waste the time to constantly redo the... Uh, glitter because you're I mean I don't have to waste glitter that way too you know you don't have to keep and glitterful has really good coverage so to say that you know you have to mod podge something two three times to 
get the coverage you want. It's, that's just the way Mod Podge is. All right, so I'm gonna tap off the excess. See, this is with epoxy. I don't see any holes. I don't have to go back and redo it. You see? So I'm gonna dump, I got my wax paper here. I'm gonna dump this back in the bottle. I'm not gonna waste any glitter. And I'm gonna take the same wax paper in a minute. Because people always ask, how do you get your glitter to lay flat? Well, here you go. So this is wax paper. I'm going to take this wax paper and I can lay my cup down and just kind of roll it in the wax paper. Sometimes I'll just pat it. It just depends on my mood. But then I'll go around and get my edge, make sure there's no shards, wipe that off a little bit. Now, so we've got good coverage after one coat. My glitter's laying flat, which is another thing. You kind of really can't do that with Mod Podge. So if you want to get that glitter laying nice and flat, I would suggest just mixing a small amount of epoxy. See, we've got this here, and it's nice and flat. Let's see if we can get a good focus here. Now I'm going to take the tape and I'm going to rip it off now. If you wait and rip the tape off later, that's when you're going to have big clumps of, use my little dental pick here. This one's been sitting here for a little while. And you won't get those big clumps of things coming off. See, I'm peeling my... It's the same thing with a peekaboo. If you do a double glitter peekaboo, you're going to want to peel that vinyl off right after you glitter it. You see? I'm not getting any clumps coming off. I got a nice line here. And there it is. Nice straight line. And I have, I mean, you know, little random pieces of, I'm gonna throw this mess away, little random pieces of blue glitter on my cup, big deal, brush them off. Okay. This is my first step. Now, normally I would let this dry four to six hours before I touch it again, but I'll show you the next one really fast and then we'll move on because I have others sitting here that I can show you. So I'm gonna go from, after waiting four to six hours, we didn't wait here, but let's wait four to six hours, come back with my tape, and I'll rip a piece of painter's tape again. And we're going to go another half inch down because these two together equal an inch, the blue and the black. All right, since I don't want to touch this because it's kind of wet, I'm just going to kind of hold it close. If this is dry, if you waited, you can just tump it back in the cup like I did the first time. And I'm going to take my tape with me here. It's hard to do this with one hand. Let me check this to make sure I got it right. Might it be a little short. That's about right. Okay. Now I'm gonna go around, make my line again. Now again, if I think I'm wonky, I'll just go back and check it with my tape measure when I go around. Here we go, second line. This is for our black. Okay, so like I said, wait four to six hours for this blue to dry. If you do epoxy, if you do Mod Podge, you can go right away. As soon as Mod Podge dries, like 30 minutes, you know. 
um, go down your half an inch, tape again, okay, and now we're going to go this part here. Let me show you that. I have this sitting right here. So here I taped and I started painting black. I'm going to show you. I'm going to do my second coat here. For this one, I used folk art licorice. Comes in that same like basic primary color pack. I'm just going to do real quick my second coat here. Now, this is why I use the flathead brush because here where this line is, you can butt it right up against that glitter line and get right by it. Let me throw myself some more paint here. You can butt it right up against there without making a mess use like a regular brush it's not flathead it's harder to do that it's harder to get that detail in there so I just put my flathead brush right up against that glitter line and get my paint up in there doesn't matter if your paint lines are not smooth because you can't see them because you're going to glitter over them I'm just getting my second coat on here and I have one ready that I can show you the next step on. But again, reiterating, if you want to use Mod Podge, that's fine. It's just my reasoning for wanting to use a small amount of epoxy is because it looks much cleaner when you peel the tape line and it gives me better coverage with less steps. So. There's my second line. I come in and do my black now. The black in this one is from Mr. Nola's Glitter. It's called Fix My Streets Junior. It's an extra fine glitter. So let me take one that's been drying for a little while. Let's go with this one. And I'm going to take my, I still have my epoxy here. I am literally like taking my fingernail here and coloring in the space by the glitter, the blue glitter. It's working just fine. It's actually giving me more control than a paintbrush. It's kind of interesting. Just dipping my fingernail in there and brushing like a paintbrush. a lot of detail work and I need a little bit of patience for it but the results very nice <laughs> so I'm gonna take this black sprinkle it on here also another reason why you want to let the layers dry is so that my glitter glitter each color you don't mix them together because you can easily brush this off now from the blue brush this black off and I'm gonna make sure I sprinkle this a couple times take a paintbrush here Some of this off. Make sure you don't get any blue in there though. Let me get that out. Okay, so I've got my second layer glittered. Black. And then I am going to do the bottom next because that's black also. So I'm going to wait for a little while for this to dry, a few hours. Then I'll come back and show you the bottom. Hi guys, so I'm back. 
Um, remember, we've done our our top portion. I let it dry. I let this black part dry for four to six hours. And then what I did was I took some tape again, half an inch for this black portion also. So I measured up half an inch, taped it off. And then I painted two coats of the folk art licorice paint. And now I'm just going to put my epoxy on there and glitter it. So let me grab a piece of wax paper here. And just a light amount again. I mixed up. Probably two and a half mls here but i'm making a batch of cups so this really works out for me um using the epoxy this way if it doesn't for you you can use the mod podge i've got seven cups that i'm working on so i uh can use all this mod podges to uh epoxy the rest of them and glitter them i mean the advantage again is that i think that the tape peels cleaner and you get better coverage the first time around so here I am here, got that done. I'm gonna throw on Fix My Streets Junior. Remember that's from Mr. Nola's, that's what the black is. I don't have a lot in here, so I'm probably gonna have to get back in the cup, use it again. I like to go over it a couple times anyway, even when I'm a uh, epoxy method, just to make sure I have good coverage. And yeah, I'll take my glove off. going to put that back in there, peel this tape off, try to peel it as soon as you can, especially if you're using Mod Podge. If you let that Mod Podge dry, woo, you're going to have the ugliest line ever. Again, you know, pretty clean line. And then I'm going to let that one dry for four to six hours. And then what I did is I will seal it with some Rust Oleum Matte Clear. I'm going to seal it at this point um, after this part dries the top and the bottom because what I'm going to do next is the skin tone, and I don't want any black or blue getting in there so I'm going to seal the top and the bottom and let that dry then I'll get on to the, the face part I'm back to talk about what we do next so we've got our crown section the little black line underneath the crown section and the bottom done we're moving on to the face so what I did here is I just measured the face measurement is two inches so you measure two inches down and you put your tape and I've already painted this two times with this is folk art again folk art linen so I painted my face area twice and then I'm gonna go in with my epoxy again small amount and when you get close to that area I just use my fingernail to kind of push it in there.
the glitter that I used for the face of the Nutcracker is called Baby Face, and it is from Glitter for All. Great skin tone glitter. Really hard to find skin tone glitters if you can get your hands on this. It's awesome for skin tones. So I'm going to take some of this and I'll just put it on my epoxy. color in there so I'm going to take that out with my pick. I love my dental pick. I use it a lot. Takes tape off, picks weird pieces of glitter out of there. See? All gone. <laughs> Alright, now I'm going to take a brush here and brush off some of this excess right here. Just use the end of an old paintbrush. Big ratty kids paintbrush. <laughs> then I'm going to go over here. I go on the side just over trash can or over my carpet whatever because we vacuum it up all the time. There's glitter everywhere because I don't want to um, put that over my good glitter because I might somehow a piece of black might have escaped you know. You don't want to get that involved in your glitter. Before I peel my tape, I'm going to pick this up, put it back in the bottle. Trying not to spill any because this, like I said, the skin color glitter is tough to find. I don't want to waste that. So I'm going to come back and peel my tape and see what we've got. I've got one little spot here. I'll probably just go back and touch that up. Other than that, looks pretty good. Next step after that, we're going to go in and do our shirt part, which is red. Hi, so we're back. I've got, oh, you know, three quarters of this guy ready to go so far. So we've got half an inch of the blue, half an inch for the black, two inches for the face, and what you do next is you tape off at two inches and you're going to paint it red, the red that I used is Folk Art Lipstick Red. And I just painted two coats of the red and I have my epoxy, my little bit of epoxy already on there. So I'm going to go ahead and glitter it. Um, the red that I used for this is called Studded Kiss from Glitterful. And I'm going to just throw this on there. I have already sealed um, each layer of this. So what I did is when I did the first two coats, the black and the blue, I sealed it. Then when I did the face, I sealed this just the face part again. And so now my red is kind of getting in there, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to take my paintbrush, brush some of it out, and I take my um, dental tool, my dental pick tool, and pick out any excess that's on there because I've already sealed my skin tone, so it's not going to get in there. I'm going to go over this a couple times, just make sure I get good coverage, especially at the edges. And since I've sealed it, I don't really have to worry about too much contamination happening because my glitter's not coming off. So it's on my red. So I'm going to put that back in the bottle. I like using wax paper and the glitter slides right off of it pretty well. So I'm going to take my little paintbrush here and just brush the edges off a little bit. 
I could probably throw this back in the bottle too. I'm not brushing that off because it's in the epoxy and that's gross. I don't want to run my brush through that. I don't need that kind of a surprise. Some of this can be brushed off here. Basically, most of this is good. Most of it's coming off. You get your little pieces here and there. I'm just going to swipe that off to the side here. And I'm going to take my tape off again. Let's see, I got that pretty good line there. One little blip, but I can fix that. What I do to fix, like if I get a like a little part on my line that's not that great, sometimes I'll go back with my next coat of epoxy, but I'll throw some more paint right there, and then I'll just or Mod Podge or epoxy, and I'll just throw a little bit of glitter on there and pat it down with my finger. And it's just fine. So I'm going to let this dry for you know a few hours. Um, and I'll go back with my little tool, my little dental pick tool, and I'll pick just those little tiny pieces out. Then what I'm going to do after I touch this little spot up with my Mod Podge or epoxy, whatever I've got at the time, I'm going to seal this part. Now, with the red, you need to be very careful you can't seal it and then set the cup this way. If you do, the sealant's going to run down into your skin tone. And you're going to have red in here. Red always runs. It's like you dye your hair red. You look like you murdered somebody for six months after you dye a red. It's the same thing with red glitter or red clothes. You know how your clothes turn pink. You don't want this red to run down into your skin tone. Even though this is sealed, it will still run in here. So what you want to do is I seal just this section and I set it up like this so that it runs down this way. Okay. So you don't want to seal it and set it like that. So we've got one more section to go. And I'll be back with you on that glittering that section. Okay, so we're back. We've got our red done. It's dried. I sealed it with the matte clear. And remember, I told you not to leave it upside down because you don't want your red to run into your skin tone. See, mine didn't run. It's just fine because I set it straight up and down. Now, the last part, you don't have to tape off because it's the only part that's left. So I just painted it two coats with the true blue again some epoxy on there and I am going to glitter it again with the September from Glitterful because that's what we used for the top part. So I'm just going to do that. And we don't have to peel any tape off this time. We're good to go. I'm just going to go around this a couple times. And I sealed my black on the bottom and I sealed this red so you're not going to have a lot of migration. Same thing what I did with the skin tone. You can just brush it off with a brush and use your um, tweezers or your little pick to get out any extra pieces. I'm going to go around this. Another time, just to make sure I get good coverage here. Take my little brush, and I'm going to brush around the black part here on the bottom. Get that excess off, and whatever's there. Later on, I'll go back when I let this dry, pick it off with my little pick if it is stuck in there. This 
this one has little shards in it and so I want to kind of use my wax paper to press it down a little bit like I did with the crown the red one that I use and the black and the skin tone those are more um, of a fine hex glitter so you don't have to push it down as much this one's got a little bit of chunkiness to it, so I just press it down. Paper and press it. Tuck it on here. Get that blue to lay flat. And once I wait my few hours for this to dry, I will seal this blue part again. I'll probably go back and seal the red one more time because, like I said, I don't want that red to run. So there we are. We've got our glitter done with the body. So yeah, I'm going to let this blue dry and seal it with the matte and then we will be ready for epoxy. Hi guys, when we left off last, I had glittered all of the sections of the Nutcracker. Uh, and all I did after that was I had two coats of epoxy. Um, I used KS Resin Stone UV. A couple of hints for what I do is I uh, really don't baby my epoxy too much, but um, I mix both parts together and then I put them in a water bath on a candle warmer for uh, about two minutes, well, about five minutes. And then I come back and I apply and I just hit it with a torch. So I usually don't have a whole lot of problems with bubbles. I love KS, it's great stuff. If you haven't tried it, you should. Uh, but anyway, so I put two coats on this guy and I sanded him smooth. So now I'm ready for my first decal, which is the crown. Um, I'm gonna try to add the measurements Again, this is a 20 ounce hog skinny, so I'm going to try to add the measurements um, in the comments section so that you'll have them. Um, but the measurements for this, for the crown, are a nine and a half width by half an inch height. So basically, I just cut it. I cut it out of this vinyl. It's like a glitter vinyl. I believe I got it from Joann's. It is kind of testy. Um, I don't even use transfer paper with it. I'm just going to peel it off by hand and put it on for you. So I'll show you kind of what I do. Usually it just comes right off. This stuff doesn't like to stick to anything but the super, like the high tack transfer tape. And I hate that stuff. So I just peel it off by hand and I just pick a spot up here and I place it down like on the line kind of where the black and the blue meet and I just apply it like a sticker and push it down you want to be careful not to pull it too hard because you will crack this little area in the middle you don't want to do that so just kind of take my time usually I do wet method on my decals but for this one I can just throw it on just pick it up a little by little it's going where I want it to go. This really isn't too difficult. And I just keep going around. Make sure I don't have any lumps or anything. This piece is pretty easy to work with as far as applying it. Not really. Now in the back, I have a little bit of overlap, but I just make sure it meets and I just 
pull it over and you can't even see it. Just make sure they match up. You cannot tell, see? <laughs> so, that's the crown. There it is. I thought I would come in here and show you kind of what I had to do to the eyes to make adjustments. I will link the name of the file that I purchased um, in the video, in the tutorial, in the comments. Hello, I'm Rihanna, Heather's daughter. I edit all of her videos and I just realized that for the majority of this portion of the video, you cannot see what she's talking about or what she's doing. Um, the camera is somewhere completely different, and it's really hard to tell what she's doing, or at least it is for me. So, if you can't follow along, tell us in the comments, and then she'll make a video just saying, like, the measurements and everything she's doing there, because that part of the video was completely messed up, and I'm really sorry about that, but, yeah, here's this. If you can follow along, that's great. That's wonderful. Hopefully you can. Um... If not, we'll make a second video. Here you go. But um, the eyes came kind of like this. And several of the pieces came like linked as kind of like print and cut files. And I wanted to use them as, as SVGs. So I kind of had to mess around with them and convert some of them. So with the eyes, they came as these three pieces. The black was just circles I could have recreated. I really didn't like the blue. I thought it was kind of wonky. I wanted to turn that into circles, but I wanted the white part. So what I did um, kind of was use the technique similar to what I'm about to show you to get just the whites. So after I did that, which you'll see in a minute what I mean, I wound up with a pair of eyes. Now to fix those, I don't like resizing things in pairs because it doesn't give me the exact measurement when they're together like that. So I like to split them up and then reposition them. So how I got the eyes, this white part separate from the other ones, I used my splice or my, my slice down here. You can barely see it right now because it's not activated. But what I want to do here, I'll show you the same idea. I want to get rid of one of these because I don't need it. So what I'm going to do is go to my shapes and just pick a shape. It really doesn't matter as long as it covers. And you can resize the shape, but I don't really need to right now. So I'm going to cover up one of the eyes. And then I'm going to draw a box over the entire, you know, both sets of eyes. And then down here, all of a sudden, my slice is activated. Now, if you do something with your slice and it's not activated when you try to do this, it means you need to weld the shapes together. Since these two eyes were together, they were already welded. If it was two separate eyes and I tried to do that, it wouldn't let me. But I don't need to do that anyway because that's the whole purpose of me trying to slice it right now. But if you get that situation, you have to weld the shape together first before you slice it. So these were already together. So I put the circle over one and my slice is lit up. So I'm going to click on it. And then I have a circle and I'm going to pull it out here and just get rid of it. Then I have an, a separate two circles. I can delete this one because I don't really need it. I'm going to resize this one to the size I want and then I will make a second one. So I'm going to go up to more. And it's a custom measurement for the eye. And I will put these measurements in the comments. It's 0.75 by 0.5. So 0.75 height or width by 0.5 height. And then I've got my circle. Now what I want to do here is I am going to go to edit, copy, edit, no, actually, let me not do that yet. I want to turn this a little bit more to make it flat. It's kind of discovered I like my eyes a little flatter. So I'm going to make this level. And now I'm going to go to edit copy. Edit 
paste. Now, if I wanted to keep them on the slant, I could also do that. What I would do is go to edit, copy, edit, paste, and then I need to go to flip and I would flip horizontal and that would give me like a mirror image of it. But since these are the same, I don't need to do that. So my eyes, I wanted less on a slant. And if I change my mind, I can go back and slant them. For now, I'm going to leave it like that. They're almost... I think almost an inch apart. A little under, about three quarters. And then, if I wanted to, which now just to make sure because I might want to go back and change this in a little while I'm going to copy a couple more paste a couple more or at least one more I'll put this over here I'm going to weld these two together to make them a pair so that when I cut them so I put a square around both and I go down to my weld now they're together See? so that's how I redid the eyes the whites of the eyes now the blue is simply a circle. So I went into the circle here. I changed it to blue just so that I know that that's the eye shape that I need. And the blues of the eyes are 0.4. So I'm gonna go to my size. And since it's a circle, I don't wanna unlock it. The circles are even. And there's my, my next layer on the eyes. And again, edit copy, edit paste. And I can take a look and put these in there. And make sure. These pretty much touch the top and the bottom. So it's kind of hard to do with my mouse, but with my bare hands, I'm much better <laughs> than trying to get this little thing in there with the mouse. But you know, you can kind of get the idea. Now the next layer is a black circle. <clears throat> so you're gonna go to your shapes. And the black one is 0.32. Size it to 0.32, and then we've got this layer here. And let me copy paste it so I have two. with the wrong hand and it's not easy let me switch that around <clears throat> okay and again they're not I could weld these together to print them out and put them in the eyes but it's a lot easier with this just to do it by hand. And I just changed my size. I need to go change it now. It's easy to do. Sometimes these there. So there's the idea about that. Now the whites are pretty small. They are 0.1, so last circle here. And I like to change it to white so I can see what's going on here. And then I go to my size, change it to 0.1. And edit copy, edit paste again. Now if I batch do these, usually what I do is I print out 
several of them. Like I would do the white, the little dots, and then the outline, I think the bigger part of the eye first. And I'd come back and do my other shapes next. That's basically what I had to do to get the eyes to look like that instead of like that crazy weird wonky shape. So that's the eyes. And like I said, I pronounce, you know, the white first, then the blue, then the black. And if I'm making more than one, if I have a batch going, I'll print them all out at once. So um, I'll show you how I put them together. It's really easy. It's not that complicated. It's just a bunch of basically layering stickers on top of each other. I don't even really use transfer paper until I put the whole entire eye on. So I will show you that part next. Hi guys, I came back just to show you how I put the eyes together. I have two sets of eyes here. When I print out the whites, I make sure uh, that they come out in a set apart like this and I keep them that way. And then I really don't use transfer paper till the very end. What I do is I just hand put the pieces in there. I do use tweezers. Let me grab my tweezers. And I'm going to take the blue first. And I just peel them off. And I try to put them right in the middle. Push them down. That's, they, the eyes are fairly simple. Blue comes first, right on top of the white. I'm doing two pairs here at once. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take the black piece here. That's the next one. And I take my tweezers. I really try to use tweezers instead of my fingers because you can get like, because you work with glitter so much if you make cups, um, the glitter can get underneath here and then you have a bump in your vinyl and you don't want that and then you're trying to figure out what the bump is. So I try to use the tweezers. And I'm going to put this right on top of the blue. And there's craziness going on in my house right now. Alright. Just put that black right on top of the blue, and then we've got the white piece left. The white's a little different. Um, I don't put that right on top. That's kind of like the highlight piece. So I kind of put those a little bit of a different spot. I'll show you. A white piece. I like to put them sort of towards the bottom, but like looking kind of in so that they kind of have that look to them. Kind of the same on the other side. They don't have to be exact, but there, pair of eyes. I'm going to do the other pair. There's game going on in my house, so people are screaming. <laughs> there we go, we got two pairs of eyes. And then what I'm going to do is take a piece of transfer paper and take the pair and put them on the cup. So this is my fancy cradle for the night. <laughs> Sometimes I use my legs instead of my little PVC cradle. Anyway, I have my pair of eyes and... Um, Usually, I just put them about how a half an inch down. So I find my center, my center point here on the crown. And that's pretty easy. I find the back where I put the crown vinyl together and I find that. I kind of take a look before I press it down. And the edge of the eyes kind of like each take a corner of the round piece. 
Let me show you on Valentina. I'm gonna do them in batches. A lot of times I will hold them next to each other. So these are kind of high, but if I'm doing them separately, it really doesn't matter. I'm kind of OCD, so I like to, especially if I make them together, people can see. So I'm gonna push it down and just, sometimes I use my scraper tool. Sometimes I don't because a lot of times it just comes right off. This is Oracal, so. And my eyes. So that's how you do the eyes. Next step will be the nose. Okay, so I'm back to show you how to do the rest of the face, the nose, the mustache, the teeth. Um, the eyebrows came in a separate file, I believe, and those were fine. Uh, but they all came together like this, and I can't size anything to save myself this way. And you could not weld and slice this one for some reason. So what I did here is I took this file and I turned the grid off on my Cricut screen. So to do that, you go to settings and then you go to canvas grid and you turn on no grid. And then I did a clip, like a screen clip. And I think to do that on here, you do window shift S. So window shift S and it gives you this up here. So what I did was very carefully took a screenshot of each piece and then I saved it. So I just clicked on it and then I went to my little disc here. And then I saved it and I said, I'm going to crack her teeth. Boom. <laughs> I'm not going to save it again because I already did. But, so that's the gist for that. And then I did it again for the teeth. I did it again for the nose. And I did it again for the mustache. So they were all separated. And then I went in to, let me bring my grid back. I'm going to settings, grid. And then I went in to Design Space and I just uploaded each thing as an SVG. And then it came in as a separate thing. So this one you have to do a little differently. So here we are with, I'm going to hide this because I wound up with this here. I actually think I sliced, I think I did it together so that they would be together. I did the teeth like that and then I did the mustache and the nose so that's what I wound up with so I think I did the teeth as one piece which is fine so now I'm going to cut the nose next let me hide the other pieces and the nose measurements are 0.25 width by 0.55. So I am going to change that. I'm going to go in here and unlock it because I need to customize it. 0.25. Like I said, I will try to put these measurements in the comments. 0.55. And then you get that. And I cut the nose out of kind of like a tan vinyl, not a skin tone vinyl, but a little bit darker so that it stands out from the skin color. So I'll be back to show you how to put that part on. Okay, so I'm back with my little nose. I just put it on a little scrap of transfer paper here. The nose kind of lines up in the middle of the eyes. And then I just put it like a little bit lower than the eye line, not by much. Kind of in the center of this point right here. Mm -hmm. 
just make sure it's straight. Push it down. There it is. And I do all of the noses. <laughs> so there's your nose. So we are on the mustache now. Uh, the measurements for the mustache are 2.75 width by 0.4 height. Um, I believe this one came separated from the rest of the face. Oh, no, it didn't. No, it came all, all hooked together. Um, and remember how I had to, like, take a picture of the screen and take a screenshot and then crop it out and then bring it back into design space and all of that good stuff. <laughs> so this is part of the, the nose the mustache and the teeth that we separated. So the measurements for the mess, the mustache by itself are 2.75 by 0.4. And I'm going to take it and do the usual. Get my scraper here. My table is a mess right now. I'll give you an idea of a placement for this. A different tape that I'm getting used to. Okay, so mustache I usually put like right underneath the nose. Let's see if I can show you here. Really pretty close to it. You try and center it, you know, in the middle and get it straight. And then we have a mustache. And we'll be back with the teeth. So we're back for the mouth pieces. We have the teeth and then the background for the teeth so they show up. The measurements for the black are 0.9 width by 0.5 height, and then the teeth themselves are 0.869 by 0.443. This is just basic layering your vinyl. You don't really even have to get too particular about this. And just lay it down the way you think it looks good. I just kind of eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Try and get those teeth in the black box, and that's about it, really. Scrape it again. Oh, transfer tape's a little big, but that's okay. Back of this one. And then you take your little nutcracker and I'll make sure I've got you in here. You're going to kind of just put it right below the um, mustache, just kind of center it. So it's going to be like between the two. so that I can then I'll come back and show you. I'm going to cut my tape a little shorter. I don't like to have tape lapping over things. I'm going to make sure that it's not touching the mustache. That's the tricky part there. <laughs> I want to touch the mustache, but get it in the face. <laughs> Teeth. Yep. 
I'll be back for those eyebrows. Okay, so we're back to talk about the eyebrows. The eyebrows came in a set, and I've already told you I like to size things individually. So I did the method that I had been doing previous to this. So I take a shape, and I'm going to unlock this to turn this into a rectangle. Man, probably could just use a square, but whatever. And I'm gonna put it over this eyebrow. Box around everything, go down to my slice. And I'm gonna take this out of the way and delete it. Take that out of the way and delete it. And now I have separated eyebrows. I do not need both of them. I mean, I suppose I could just keep them that way. I will just do I like to do them one at a time. So what I'm going to do is I just, I'm going to delete the other one and I'll tell you what I normally do. And I'm going to resize this one to the correct size. And the size for the eyebrow is 1.1 width. So let me go up here, unlock it since I have to customize the width and the height. It's 1.1 width. And it's 0.5 height. Now I'm going to take this same eyebrow and I am going to edit copy, edit paste. Problem is, we're both facing the same direction. I want to flip it. So I'm going to go to flip. I'm going to flip horizontal. And now we have eyebrows that are facing the same direction. Um, I don't space mine apart. I kind of put mine on freehand because I print them out separately than the eyes. So I just kind of um, print them out in a set. But then I put them on by hand to the way that I think they look good. So I'm going to print these out and then I'll show you how I put them on. So, like I said, I kind of freehand the eyes, um, or the eyebrows. I like to put them, let me see if I can get you a little bit, let me go this way. I like to put them where they're on an angle, like that, and the eyebrow just comes forward a little bit past the eye. So, I'm trying to get this in a good spot, I kind of barely below the black line and then I make sure that the bottom part of the eyebrow extends past the eye and it's not touching the eye and then I just set it down and I try to make the other one look the same as I can since the eyes and the eyebrows were done in that weird way and they weren't together I kind of can't print them out with the spaces together. I mean, I guess I could, but that's a lot more complicated, I think, than to just to kind of eyeball it. So I just take it and then I compare it to the other one. I could try to put it in about the same spot. And before I push down, I take a look, you know, see how I feel about it. So I can still pick that up. I haven't pressed it in yet. That looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but you know, if it's totally off, you can tell. So you can your eyebrows. Next thing we're gonna do is the belt. I'll be back for that. So we're back with the belt. Um, I print out the black part first and then the buckle. So the black part, I'm going to show you first. It is nine and a half width by 0.75 height. I don't use um, transfer paper for it. I prefer to kind of just peel it up like a sticker and put it on. I feel like it gives me more control over where it gets centered and stuff. 
So you want, obviously, to get it, um, try to get it centered according to. So I take the part where the, the belt buckle goes because it kind of raises up. I just kind of eyeball it and want it to be centered as much as I can get it. And then I try to keep this line. And you have to kind of hand curve it a little bit. But it's fairly simple. I mean, this is a skinny tumbler, so. But you try to keep the line over your glitter line so that it covers it. And I just... This one's too high, so I'm going to go back and just kind of adjust it a little bit because it easily comes up. It's not... Like it's a hard adjustment here. Of course, sometimes it's easier than others. Move this down just a little bit. I didn't put it centered it, but I didn't put it down low enough. You're gonna want to make sure it's kind of in the middle. You have to pick up that end again. And I like using dental picks to help me pick up my vinyl a little bit if I need to. Just on the edge, and then I'll use my tweezer to pry it up a little bit more. And I can just peel that and adjust it because I have a bump there. This one is being a butt because I don't like the way it looks. So I'm going to just pick it up and rearrange it, which is fine. I'm going to lower it anyway. I don't think I put it down there low enough. I do have one of those um, cradles. I just don't use it all the time. It's a lot of times I'm manipulating things with my hands and I end up picking it up anyway. So now is really not the time I need to use that. <laughs> that just kind of gets in the way. All right now the front looks pretty good. Sometimes since I don't curve anything and this image isn't curved, you have to do your own little, because even though it's a skinny, it is tapered a little bit on the back. So we're going to try and make these meet up a little better. And this is where you have to, the belt is really one of the most complicated parts of this to get it to try and match up on the back. So that it looks kind of seamless. So I've got it matched up, but I've got a bubble there. So I'm going to make sure I can get that bubble out before I match it. Make sure it's matched up nicely. I think I'm just going to push this down. There we go. Let's see, we have a nice edge on the belt. Sometimes it takes a little work. That one was a little finicky, but then we're going to put the belt buckle on next. So here is a PSA about this glitter vinyl that I'm using. This, I think, is Joanne's brand. Um... It's really pretty, but I hate working with it. Um, it's the same thing that I use for the crown. This is for the belt buckle, and I'm going to use it for the vest also. Uh, it doesn't stick to your mat. Like you have to, I have to tape it down with electrical tape. It, I have to use the Cricut Strong Grip Tape, which I hate using that stuff. Um, 
I think I'm going to replace it. I found a, a nice replacement as well. Uh, I think I got it from, I found it at, it's now called Vinyl 143, I think. Um, and it's like this vinyl, but it doesn't have that like hard, rough surface. So I'm hoping that will be better. It's pretty, but I cannot stand working with it. So anyway, um, the belt buckle prints out at the same time as the belt so you don't have to worry about resizing it what I do is I just hide my belt buckle resize my belt and then print it out after separately so that I can put it on I got strong grip tape so I know it's going to come off of the paper because if I don't it's not going to I mean this is kind of pretty self-explanatory I just place it over there and put it down and make sure it's where I want it to be and sometimes it's kind of hard to do with this glare at night let me get this over where you can see it and I can see it at the same time doesn't want to come off of anything. It's, I can't stand it. <sighs> and we have the belt. I will be back to show you the vest, the last piece before we um, epoxy the first coat. But first, the vest. Okay, so it did it again. I don't know why the camera kept doing that. It's really annoying and it really sucks, but um, yeah, for now, this is all the footage we have. So here you go. Okay, so we're back to talk about the vest. The vest pieces come in little sections like this. And there's three of them. Oops, it's the wrong piece. We need to show the third one. Here we go. And they are separated. So what I did was I drew a square around all three of them. And I changed the size. The size for the 20 ounce is three width by 1.5 height. And then I took that and I came down here and I hit weld and I've already got one done up here. So I'll show you. I'll weld this one too. So you weld them together so that they're all ready to go. And then you just print it out like you normally do. And then I will show you kind of the placement on that real quick. So the last time I was with you, I told you I hated that um, Joanne's metallic because it was just horrible, pulled up all the time, and I had to redo it a lot. So I have replaced it with this one. I really, I've been using it on this next batch, and I really like it. Um, it is from... Uh, 651vinyl.com, but now they've renamed themselves. Um, I think it's Vinyl142 is their new name. Um, and it's the StarCraft Magic Deceit Glitter Gold. So if you're looking for that, that's the vinyl that I changed to, and I like it a lot better. It's a lot better to use, a lot easier. Sticks to the cup, it doesn't pull up all the time. So there you go. I take it and I kind of... Make sure it's flat, just like a tiny bit above the belt. And then I lay it down, so I'll pause, and then I'll show it to you when it's done. Okay, I got a little closer here. So I'm just going to put this a little bit above the bottom, and I'm trying to center it. Just make sure it's kind of flat. And you want to make sure 
when it comes. This is when you realize if your belt is messed up as well. If I need to redo the belt or not. I just kind of, I don't push it down until I'm like completely committed to where it is and happy with it. That's a good thing about this piece because you can kind of mess around with it a little bit. And then I push it down. Just with my fingers for now, I'll go back with my scraper. And he is ready for epoxy now. So I'm going to give these one coat of epoxy and then I put a name decal on the back so we can talk about that a little bit next. Hi, so we're back. We had put all our parts of the nutcracker on and I've given him another coat of epoxy to cover the decals. So what I did is I glittered all the sections, did a couple coats of epoxy, sanded it, added my decals, added one more coat of epoxy. And now I'm going to put the name on the back. The reason why I don't put the name on the back with these decals is I've I use metallic vinyl and sometimes it can be kind of um, touchy and if it messes up the decal it's a lot easier for me to use my heat gun and just pull it right off. Well if I do that app, uh, over this belt I'm going to have to pull the belt off as well and I don't really want to go through all of that. So I always give the one coat first and then I throw my decal over it. So I, I just sand in that area unless I see any rough spots anywhere else but this one's fine. So I just sanded right here on the back and I do an offset with this particular design. Uh, I will have a separate tutorial on my YouTube channel um, on how to do an offset. I use Inkscape. It's a free program. So I will do a separate tutorial for that and you can just kind of go over there and check that out and see how I do those. You can make an offset as skinny or as fat as you like. These tend to be a little bit on the skinny side for me. So my outline, my offset is white. And then here's that metallic, it's a gold. Um, I got the, the gold metallic from 143 vinyl. I think I might've said 142 vinyl earlier with this, <laughs> this one here, but it's 143 vinyl. Um, I really like this new vinyl. I've epoxied over it for the first time. It wasn't difficult to use, it didn't pull up after epoxy. So I really recommend that one. So this metallic is a little touchy. Um, I will talk about how I treat that after I do this. I wet method my decals a lot. And in this particular instance, for sure, when you layer your vinyl, this will get rid of all kinds of bubbles if you do it this way. So I take, I just got this paper here. It is a high tech paper tape. Um, from 143 vinyl and I really like it. It's for uh, particularly for wet method It's a little weird looking at first because it's paper. I do have paper tape from other places as well but This one works really well just for wet method. Like I don't think I'd use it for anything else. I really like it for this So I cut a piece off And then you just peel it off of the back but the paper itself is the transfer tape is paper. So I take it and sometimes I don't cut one big enough, which I did just here, which that's not a big deal to me. I just cut another little piece off and tack it on the end. My life's not over if that happens, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that right on the end. And then I'm gonna take my scraper I'm going to flip this over and do the back. And a lot of times what I do is I'll just peel it back like this just to get it started. And then show these little tiny pieces like that. And make sure I get that down there. Kind of came up. And then I'm going to peel it a little bit at a time. And there's my top, so I've got that off. 
And then I'm going to take, with wet method, you use a spray bottle. This is just a cheap old washing like thing you use to wash windows and stuff like that. Spray bottle. Got it at Walmart. Uh, and then I put some water and like two or three drops of Dawn dish soap. And then I'm going to spray the back of the decal. And I'm going to spray the other side. And then I'm going to take it. And you can still see through the paper tape. Since I sprayed it, I can move it around to line it up. I don't have to worry about it being perfect right now as so I can slide it to where I want it to be. I also um, wet method a lot of my bigger decals because I like my decal to fit my cup, the curve of my cup better. If you wet method your decal, you can move it around and make it fit better. So I'll probably do a tutorial on that as well because people ask me about that a lot. So. And I do know I have a, a partially like a wet method um, tutorial in my pool cup video if you want to watch uh, where I decal my cup there because I use the wet method. But anyway, so I'm going to squeeze the water out of this. And this paper tape is soaking up the water. So it's, that's really why I like it a lot. The regular transfer tape doesn't do that. I'm just going to flip this over. You do have to take your time to get it kind of started because the paper is wet. Sometimes you get this right here where the other paper kind of melts together, which is fine because I usually will just scrape a piece off and get it started that way. There we go. And just peeling the back off like you normally would on the regular decal, but like I said, it can be finicky sometimes. But it's worth it in the end because you don't have the bubbles underneath. Let me start over here so you can make it. There we go. Sometimes it's better just to pick another spot too. I really love dental picks. If you don't have one, I highly recommend getting one. I use mine all the time for stuff like this because I can use it to hold the paper down while I'm peeling. I can use it to peel this like little excess wet paper that comes up sometimes. And I've got like a little tiny piece of that blue. I'm just gonna scrape it off with my dental pick. Okay, so I've got the whole entire decal and back put together on this tape and I'm going to spray the cup you want to spray your cup to keep it wet also and then I'm going to spray the back of this one and I like to get even with my cup or put it in my lap so I can see what I'm doing make sure it's even I find where my vinyl kind of ended on the crown so I started it here on the back and I kind of put the middle of the letters where that line is, where the crown vinyl started. And I fit the name between the two black sections of the cup. And then I hold it this way to make sure I'm happy with the way it looks that way, to make sure it's straight. And I also look over here to make sure that it's about the same amount of evenness when it goes down. I don't want it to be closer on one side than the other. And you can kind of see this tape. You see how it's like a paper towel almost. It sucks up all of the water. Now, if you use regular transfer tape, which I do also, you have to let it sit and dry a little bit before you remove it. This, you don't have to wait as long. I could just take this for a couple of minutes and rub a paper towel over it. I'll wipe up some of this. It does get a little wet around here. I'm using all this water. I'm just going to wipe it off a little. Most of the time I don't tend to use my scraper because this has been scraped so much before I put it on here. It's on here. I don't have to worry about that part. I'm just kind of squeezing some of this water out, but look at that tape. It is soaking up all of it. So this is, yeah, the high-tack, the high-tack tape. 
from 143 vinyl. And I use it just for wet method. And I just started using it. I really like it. Let's see, I'm gonna pull this off. There's that one little piece that I added at the end. No biggie, see? No bubbles. Got a little wetness here. I'm just gonna wipe it. And I'll go over this. I'll spray it with a little bit of alcohol. I let it dry overnight and I'll spray it with a little alcohol to make sure that it's um, nice and shiny. So after this, we just epoxy the cup, usually one coat, sometimes two, if it's a little bit finicky on the name, you know, I don't feel it's covered enough and then it's finished. So I'll be back with the finished product and we'll finish up the tutorial. So we're back and here is the final product. We just added one coat of epoxy over the name on the back and then you're with that you're finished. Your nutcracker's done with a personalized name. So here it is. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. We'll be back with some more at a later date. And like I said, I'll try to put all the measurements and such down in the uh, description for you. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, be sure to click that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials just like this one, but hopefully with a little bit better camera quality, click that subscribe button. And be sure to follow the Glittery Bohemian at Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Bye guys, see you next time. Bye.